This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Deep South Dining is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. From fried chicken and collard greens to shrimp and grits and a glass of sweet tea. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or download our MPB public media app. Good morning, good morning. Ain't it a great morning outside? Kind of windy, kind of blustery, maybe rain, but boy, oh boy, oh boy, is it ever time to start thinking about planting for the summer. I'm horticulturist Felder Rushing, and uh, Java, it sounds like I got a little bit of whistle in my mouth. I'm not smiling that much because I lost a tooth yesterday. What were you doing, man? Yeah, but you know, it was, it was one of those those uh, fake front type teeth because you know a long time ago I had a facade put on there, and I took a bite into an omelet, and I'm thinking, mm, there's a piece of uh, eggshell in here. <laughs> now that's that's funny. Yeah, I'm glad this. Was, well, anyway, long story short, I had a, a, a local dentist put it on temporarily to get me through a, a lecture I did yesterday in, in Madison. It was, I mean, in Rislin. It was a lot of folks there. And I wanted a nice smile. Anyway, they said, don't bite on anything hard. So after my talk, I felt good. You know, back I did all that lecture across the country and blah, blah, blah. blah. And I went in and I decided to celebrate uh, after work yesterday with a, with a drink. And I got a Bloody Mary and I bit into that, that spicy green bean and boom, popped out again. So I can say that uh, that I got my teeth knocked out by in a pub. <laughs> now that's now that's one way to look at it because that's, a, that's a, a badge of honor to a lot of people. <laughs> that's right. Little do they know. But anyway, we got a lot of stuff to talk about, and uh, you know, I brought some things from the garden, some colorful stuff that smell good, taste good. I got a, a little segment about things you never really thought about much before to talk about. But it's a call-in program for anyone who's got things on their gardening mind. If you if you want to give us a t- call and and uh, ask about anything, if it's related somehow to growing things, uh, even fungus in a bowl of chili in the back of the refrigerator, that's a garden. Or, 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 or mold growing on a cup of coffee. You know, that's a water garden. Whatever, if there's something on your mind, give us a call. And we're going to start out right off the bat. Down in Natchez, Francis, how are you this morning, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? Excellent day. What's up, man? I planted some seeds for my garden about a month ago. You knew better. You knew better. Inside. Oh, inside. Okay. Okay. You did know better. In styrofoam cups, you know, with potting soil. And, uh... They're stunning. I mean, they grew up to about the tallest one is about two inches. Yeah. And the rest of them are way below that. Yeah. What did I do wrong and what what could I do to... uh correct this situation. Well, it's, it's not something you did wrong because it's a good idea and a lot of people start stuff early. I do myself, but just as soon as they sprout, I mean, just as soon as a little seed sprout, I set them out on the porch where they get real sunshine and real humidity and air movement and all the things they would normally get outside and only bring them in if it's going to get down below about 45 or so because the, plant, the plants grow better with real sunshine and air movement which stiffens their stems and stimulates cell growth and all that. So, and they just need to be set outside where they get a little sun and some air movement and humidity and stuff. What about uh, miracle grow? Well, if you're going to, you know, these seedlings, you know, they're not growing very well, so you don't want to push them too much. You don't want to force feed them. So what I would do is, I'd, and miracle grow is fine, but I would mix it up. You know, if it calls for a scoop per gallon of water, put a third of a scoop in a gallon of water. In other words, just, just spoon, give them just a little taste. And uh, and that'll help, but put them out, you know. I wouldn't and and uh, let them get some sun. I bet they'll really jump. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Hey, uh, did, did 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 didn't you have some jelly or something for Java? Yes, sir. And I wanted to know how was it. Oh, it was good. I appreciate you, Francis. That was a. I wish I would have been around um, when you came by, but. Um, I, I was not, but I did appreciate the gift, and uh, and then when you have some more, when you make another trip to Jackson, feel free to drop by. <laughs> yeah, hey, you, you, same, you, same, same time, same place. You know, yeah. right? you know, guys, I'm just sitting right here. Oh well, yeah, fellow. We, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened to your jar. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you, Francis. Thank you, man. Okay. All righty, now um, let's go to. Um, Java Louise in Mobile. Louise, good morning. How are you today? Oh, I'm just fine, thank you. Good. Uh, my main question, well, 
I would I need your email address because I send, want to send you a picture of my church cemetery. Okay, well if if but, you if if you're going to Felder Rushing, just just go online and do a search for FelderRushing dot blog b l o g. It I, has a big I button. Did, that, well, it has big. Well, if you did it last night, I have I have been online. I've been on the road. I didn't do it last night, but I was going to that, and then you said there is a link over in the right hand corner somewhere to the email. Uh, I could never see. Well, so you know, just you, just go to my blog and scroll down. If you just scroll down, it's got a big sign that says "Email me." It does. It should. It should. Okay, I'll, I'll okay. try it again. Okay. And, well, I, I want to ask you, what, what's wrong with this Satsuma? The one that was, was most prolific uh, gave me so many, I couldn't eat them all and give them all away, so I made some orange marmalade, and it's delicious. But that one just died last winter, and it's totally dead. I gave it the, the nice scratch test mm-hmm. on different limbs, different size limbs. There's no life in it. So I hung a bunch of those plastic Easter eggs on it, and it's so cute, and I want to see it. <laughs> there you go. I want to see that. I want to see that. I just, by the way, I just went to my blog, and then when you go to it, scroll down, it says, uh, click here to visit my blog. Right under, it's got a, a caricature. My MPB caricature says contact Felder. Click here to contact Felder. Oh, it doesn't say email. It just says contact Felder. That's right. That's right. You know what? I might go back and change that. But anyway, email contact. I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, it's pretty pretty. So tell me what I did wrong with that tree. I've had it for I, years, and it was the most prolific one of all three. I, I don't know that you and, did anything wrong. You know, satsumas, uh, a lot of people grow satsumas on the Gulf Coast, but a lot of people lose them because, you know, we're north of where they really want to be. We're at the northern range of them, and, uh, and they can be damaged by, by heavy winds wiggling around too much. It causes root problems. It can be damaged by light freezes uh, from, from staying wet too long for, for three or four weeks. There's so many different things that can affect it that, you know, after a while, uh, a lot of trees, but particularly borderline trees like citrus, are going to build up problems, and they can build up, and suddenly they reach a point where they're saying, you know what, I'm out of here. And sometimes they die quickly all at once. Sometimes the limb or branches. All we can do is just cut off the dead stuff and see if that doesn't reinvigorate what's left. I did, and the trunk was too big for me to cut with my yeah. little. Yeah, it's a, t- it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. But anyway, that's, that's just part of gardening. You know, I mean, I, I, I've got a, 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 a tree, a small tree that's in front of my house. My house was built in the, the 1940s. And the original foundation shrubs that prune like big meatballs. I left one and let it grow up in a small tree. Uh, it died this past year from that freeze. It was over 80 years old, and it died suddenly. And uh, you know, so I got to cut it down, or maybe I'm gonna hang East. That's I'm gonna hang Easter eggs on it. Hmm. So anyway, well, mine looks, it, I, I, it's in the backyard. Nobody sees it but me, but I like it. There you go. Well, I pretty look forward to the picture. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, let's now slide up to Madison. Jim, what's going on? Hey, Felder. Um, I have a question about, uh, you know, I have some fruit trees. I have uh-huh. two little fig trees, and I've got two persimmon trees that have been just bearing like crazy the last few years. They're about eight feet tall, I guess. But this cold freeze, real hard freeze at Christmas, you know, it killed two of my little fig trees. Yeah. I thought stunned the persimmon trees, but... Then the persimmon trees both came out with green leaves and were looking healthy. And then this uh, last little freeze we had for three days, it's killed all of the leaves on one of my persimmon trees, but the other one is fine. So my question is, should I, on the one that killed the leaves, the new growth on, should I cut the tips of those limbs off, or will it just come back on its own? Yeah, well, you know, first of all, you're describing my garden. I lost some plants that are normally hardy well below zero. I mean, you know, because it was the the freeze was too strong too early and the plants weren't ready for it. And those that made it, they started putting out new growth last month. And then that freeze, my figs were, I even had a little fig on it and a lot, it completely leafed out. And it looks like somebody took a blow torch to it. So what I did was I just went in and, and I just, just I didn't have to. They're going to fall off anyway. I just sort of rubbed off the brown stuff and scratched on the bark. And it was green under the bark. So I just sort of cut it back a little bit to to sort of speed up the new growth. 
uh, pruning stimulates new growth. Uh, I think they'll put out new growth anyway, but if you cut them back just a little bit, that'll, that'll, the, the new growth that comes out a little bit further down will be a little bit sturdier. I mean, that's all I can do is just, you know, see what comes out and prune it if it needs it, or in, in some cases I prune it anyway. But this happened to everybody. So anyway, uh, a lot of people have, have still seeing problems in that freeze. A lot of people in uh, Java. I mean, uh, the Mississippi Garden Facebook, me riding around, looking at people's yards, uh, walking around the neighborhood. It ain't just me, but the opposite of that, it ain't just y'all. It's also me. And I wrote the book. Now, what's so funny about this freeze, Felder, because I guess, I mean, my garden is... <laughs> but um, it really affected or had a, a profound effect because you bring it up just, you know, just about every show and people will, you know, call in and talk about something that's happening with their plant. And it was because of that freeze. Yep, yep, yeah. And the last freeze, it wasn't that bad. We always get a late freeze. But the plants, because of that cold earlier, the plants got fooled into warm weather in the first part of March and they sp- thought it was April. And they sprouted out. You know, we had a lot of plants and a whole lot of people reporting this. And I see it myself. A lot of plants came out and were blooming three weeks earlier than they historically have. And they were three weeks into springtime and we got winter. So anyway, all we can do is scratch the bark. If it's bright green, it's alive. Wait and see or else go ahead and cut it back. That's it. That's it. You know, sometimes your eyebrows need a good plucking. It's time to do that to the yard, too. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so your, it's, it's your wife Crystal's birthday, isn't it? It is her birthday today. Happy birthday, Crystal. Yep. Uh, March 31st. Um, she's Aries. My birthday was earlier this month, so we are a Pisces Aries couple. <laughs> is, 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 is that a good thing? Cause, you know, I don't, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> we, we make it work. Three, uh, three beautiful kids, 10 years, and, and forever to go. You know, uh, people ask me what my sign is. I say, my sign, feces. Wait a minute. <laughs> Before we go to break, we got one more caller on the line. Um, I believe it's Rebecca. I'm not sure where she's calling from, though. Hey, Rebecca, how are you this morning? Doing great. How are you, Felder? Good, good, good. What's, what can we help you with? Well, I read about um, square foot gardening, mm-hmm. and I, they had tried it on um, the PBS thing that we get up here in Memphis. Right. And I was all excited about it until I read the word. Vermiculite. Yeah. Vermiculite is not a pass along thing. <laughs> it's like high dollar stuff. I'm like, um, yeah. Is, and it, and it's, is it's that not, like, it's not necessary. Vermiculite is a sort of, sort of like popcorn is puffed up, uh, uh, uh corn seed. Vermiculite is puffed up type of little mineral called mica. And vermiculite is sort of popcorned up, heat treated, puffed up silica, mica. And uh, and it's and it's good for fluffing up soils, but the problem is it also holds moisture, like peat moss. You know what perlite is? Perlite is puffed up something else. I can't remember what it is, but perlite helps drainage. Vermiculite helps with the drainage, but it also holds water, which can be a problem mm-hmm. in the south. Now, since you mentioned vermiculite, I know you must have been on that Mel Bartholomew's Square Gardening book type thing. And I'm yeah, gonna tell you, the book, okay, and it's like. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let, let, me, let me cut to the chase on this. The guy has made a million dollars off of something that people have been doing for thousands of years. It's just mixing stuff up in small spaces. He wrote a whole book with the recipes and laying out the square footage and square yardage. Totally unnecessary for gardeners. You go to Japan, they do it. England, they do it. Uh, poor folks across the, the world growing stuff, you know, vegetables and herbs and flowers in a little small kitchen garden. It's a concept of mixing stuff together in a small space rather than the long, skinny rows like farmers do. This guy just coined the phrase square foot gardening and turned it to a recipe. And it ain't a recipe. It's just mixing stuff together in a small space. And uh, all these things you have to do, you add this, and uh, it's a bunch of hooey. bunch of hooey. And I knew Mel Bartholomew, by the way. He's a great guy, but... Uh, there's a woman who wrote a book called Lasagna Gardening, just layering stuff. And there's books on hookah culture, which is piling sticks up and planting it. So people take instant con- interesting concepts and turn them into recipe and confuse you and me. So don't worry about the vermiculite. That's a bunch of hooey. Well, okay. Now, the um, other thing I wanted to ask you about was the Japanese persimmon. Because mm-hmm. I met um, 
uh, Larry Stevenson. Yeah, he's and a great he had guy. one. I never see those things. I never see those things at the garden center. So I bought one, and I thought it was a bush, and he kept calling it a tree. It is a tree. Like, it's a small tree. Small tree. I mean, okay. I, was, I, I was raised one up, up in the Delta. My great grandmother planted one that Hurricane Katrina pushed it over. It had been planted before my dad was born, and it never, you know, it would f- little f- kind of fit in a garage. It was, I guess, maybe 12 or 15 feet tall and wide. You know how dogwoods grow? Uh, this is, yes. or, or a big, it's, it's, it's about the size of a big fig tree. And, uh, and Okay, so I can put it close to the red bud and... We're all happy family here. All- yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's just a small tree, and they're really, really pretty plants. And you know, and you're right. They don't sell them in garden centers for one reason. People go into garden centers and ask for certain things, and that's what the garden centers order for the next year. And after a while, they order what people ask for, and people come in and ask for stuff they see in other people's yards. And if more people planted Japanese persimmons, more people go in for garden centers and ask for them, garden centers start carrying them. But they don't look like much in a. Oh, I just happened up on Larry at the. Um, farmer's market and and he had that thing and i'd heard you mention it and i'm like well we don't have to get one now yeah. we have to see yeah I, I mean i see them all over in the fall when they bloom i mean when they have fruit it's like little pumpkins on trees it's a terrific low maintenance easy delicious nutritious pretty yard plant oh win-win okay and, uh, and right, don't, don't worry about now. the vermiculite whatever kind of dirt you've got dig it up really good add some compost or manure or bar add some organic matter to it dig it into your native dirt just take your dirt and add stuff to it and plant stuff instead of rows mix things together but one, one last thing about the square foot garden he talks about interplanting certain things he was from new england right. and the stuff he says plant with other things don't grow at the same time of year here in the south See, so so right. you, you got the concept. That's what I'm thinking here yeah. in Mississippi. We get 50 inches of rain. You may not want uh, to hold all that water. I, I, I know. Wherever and, he's from. Well, he was from, he was from New England. But, it, it, the, the, again, the thing to keep in mind is is uh, it just mix stuff together that grows together. You know, lettuce and carrots and stuff don't grow in the summertime, so it doesn't make sense to plant them with your tomatoes. So, anyway, you, you got the concept. That was worth the cost of the book. Now, forget the recipes and just garden. Just mix stuff up. Anyway, we appreciate your call. I, I, sometimes I come across a little aggressive there, Jabba. Well, I did like the way you inserted uh, one or two hooies in there, you know, explaining what 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 was going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, you have you have people who come up with the idea of uh, of uh, growing stuff like we always grew stuff, you know, rainwater buckets and mixing stuff and all that, you know, and then they call it permaculture. It's just gardening. It, organic gardening is just good gardening. Hugo culture is just good. Don't people, worry. Love, people love a good packaging, though. They, they do. A lot of people need a recipe to follow, and it's a good way to start. But as soon as it falls to pieces, fall back and just garden. And now it's Felder Rushing's answers to unasked questions right here on MPB Think Radio. I think you actually have a question about this, this weather coming in. Well, I, well, you told me what you wanted to um, expound about this morning, and I just uh, said, is that like old people when they tell you it's going to rain because they feel it in their bones? Yeah. Well, it's you know, it's 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 the low pressure coming in, but now that you asked, <laughs> <laughs> the smell of rain. Here's a little thing that a lot of people just don't even think about, but there's a group of a little microorganisms in the in the soil in the dirt called actinomyces. Uh, sort of like a they're little little thread looking things. They're called hyphae, and this, they used to think it was a cross between a fungus and a bacteria. They even call it thread bacteria. Anyway, these little actinomyces release an organic compound. Uh, it's called geosmin. Geosmin. Uh, it's got a peculiar smell, Java. Uh, a lot of times we associate it with digging in the garden or plowing a field or an old cell, kind of a musty smell. Uh, but because ge- geosmin is most pronounced in moist or wet soils, it's what we smell during the rain. What happens is as the rainwater enters the soil, the air in the soil gets pushed out and it releases the geosmin into the atmosphere and we smell it. It's what gives that peculiar smell to beets you know, or, 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 or freshly dug carrots or mushrooms. You know, what do mushrooms smell like? 
you know, I don't know, dirt maybe. Uh, but it also, and by the way, camels, camels can smell G. Osmond for miles. When they say they can smell water, they're smelling the G. Osmond. Oh, yeah. I get that. You, you can even buy this perfume, dirt perfume. But anyway, Wait a minute. Yeah. It, it, it's what, the, you know, when warm lake water has a kind of peculiar smell or, or some f- water supplies, um, it's responsible for the muddy smell in freshwater fish like carp and catfish. Catfish got that kind of funky smell to them, and that's the reason a lot of people put vinegar and other acidic ingredients on it to mask that kind of a musky taste. Uh, anyway, one last thing. People can even smell geosmin before rain. What happens, low pressure comes in, and it degasses the soil. It pulls the gas out of the soil. Uh, and there's another smell. It's called petrichor. It's kind of earthy scent. Uh, it comes from Greek petro, which means stone and core, which was a Greek word for fluid that flows in the veins of gods. Uh, anyway, the smell comes from an oil exuded by some kind of plants during dry peri- periods and is absorbed into the clay. When a raindrop lands on a dry, porous surface, air from the pores, I'm reading this, forms small bubbles which float to the surface and release the oil into the air along with the geosmin and has that distinctive scent. Raindrops that move at a slow rate tend to produce more air erosis this serves an explanation of why petrichor is more common after a light rain big old raindrops hit the ground you can smell it that's a gas called petrichor and geosmin now, now that's pretty cool because you would always or at least i used to assume i don't know that the water from the air from the sky was Picking up different gases and things, but no, it's in the ground. Yes, and that's man. what and that's you're, what gives us. You're smell. smelling dirt funk. <laughs> 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 I don't think that's going to make to the scientific jur- journal. But anyway, a lot of people say they can smell a rain, cold, f- low f- pressure, degassing the soil, and you're smelling the the this peculiar smell that is what gives catfish its flavor. Uh, we have a caller. <laughs> <laughs> Enough on that. Let's get back to business. Let's go down to Biloxi to Ricky. Ricky, what? Where did I mess up with that lady in her tree? Ricky, Hello? yeah, you're on the air, man. What's up? Hey, 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 I just caught the tail. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm on yeah. speakerphone. Oh yeah, heck yeah. All right, I caught the tail end of the person a while ago. It sounded like they were having trouble getting the that summers and that type of tree to grow and, you know, establish ourselves. Right. And I've had some luck doing that. I've, I had the same thing to where it seemed like every time I'd buy like a foot tall or two foot tall one from Home Depot, you know, it would make the first year make a couple of lemons actually if it had some on it. And then that, you know, that winter, you know, it's always died. Right. And it just became a personal challenge to make them grow. So, and it really wasn't nothing big that I did. It just, I really paid a lot of attention. I'd plant them in some good miracle growth. Um, at the first hint of a freeze or even getting close, I would put a sheet over them. Um, yeah. Even had to put light bulbs out there, low wattage light bulbs, sometimes yeah. to see if I make sure. And you know, in the uh, before it started budding out, I would trim every, almost all the limbs off, just enough to have a little bit on there to make it that tree just work for trying to live, not make fruit. Yeah. Um, and I mean, not all the limbs naturally, but I mean, if it had a bunch, I would take some of the center ones out best I could. Yeah. So you and kept just, it. You, you know, minimize it, trying to work on fruit. So you you kept it as like a like a bush more than a tree. Yes. Yes. Exactly. That's I never a, got you know the highest off, but just any center part, I would take it out. Yeah, so, that's that's some that's some good tips. So you keep it compact, keep it thinned out, and then if it's going to be cold, you throw something over it. Yeah, and don't leave it on there. You know, if you put it over there and light bulb on it. Middle of the day, you know, once it warms up, take it off. Just in other words, take care of the tree. It will make it up here. Or you down go. here, everybody's gonna say it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, once it gets established, they just seem to take off and go good. Yeah. Then you don't have to worry about it. I've got some big ones that's thirty years old. Yeah. And they're just you know, I don't never even think about them. Yeah. So, so yeah, a lot of people don't realize. I tell people all the time when you first set a fruit tree in the ground, cut it back. Cut it back. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I don't fertilize them either until they get well on up there. Um, yeah. And then I just do a stake in the ground, hole in the ground, kind of like a pipe, and then you put some triple 13 in it. might not be right, but it works good for me. Yeah, well, I ain't going to argue with success, but that for triple 13 fertilizes the heck out of that hole in the ground. But the tree, the roots two, three feet over, they're saying, what the heck, what about us? It's better to scatter the stuff real evenly all up under the outspread of the branches so all the roots get a little fertilizer instead of a whole bunch getting way too much. Yeah, yeah, you you got a good point. Just on the top of the ground, you're saying? You just throw it out there and water it in. 
Well, I'll try that instead of doing the way I'm doing it. Well, no, no. If, 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 if it's working for you, I ain't going to try to change you. I'm just throwing out a, a, yeah, an yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, will. Ricky, we appreciate the call, man. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Y'all have a good one. I love the show. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, I made me a little arrangement here of my leaves I brought in. And in the process, I made this place smell so good, I got the munchies. It looks like a great salad, man. <laughs> well, I, I've, I've got some, some pale green smooth leaf lettuce. I've got some deep burgundy smooth leaf lettuce. i got some frilly uh, sort of red and, and green speckled leaves. I've got uh, uh, that's three kinds of lettuce. I've got a kind of a blue-colored kale leaves of it. I've got a purple curly kale. I've got uh, basil leaves. I've got parsley. I've got oregano, mint, and rosemary. And I picked all that either out of my truck or... Are from the curb. It looks pretty, and, w- and when it rains, not only do I get geosmin smell and petrichor, but it smells like mint tea. I can dig it. Yeah. I can dig it. Yeah, I, d- I get it. I can dig it. Oh, wow, I wasn't even <laughs> going. I wasn't going for that, but I'm I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, I got a little list because I'm missing my front tooth. It's great, and I give a big old smile, you know, and just call me Bubba Russian. <laughs> I'm having a good time, folks. I hope y'all are, too. In the springtime, I think that we're past the cold. I think we may get some cold rain this weekend, but the garden centers are humming. I went by a garden center yesterday and got some plants for some basil and uh, some uh, angelonia and a couple of other plants for the back of my truck to spruce it up because we're going to drive to Mobile, Alabama in the morning. 10 o'clock, there's going to be one of the biggest plant sales in the United States. It's at the at the Central Presbyterian Church parking lot right by the community garden corner of dolphin and saint anne's and well I'll give, I'll give some details about that later i messed up java i said it's gonna be a plant sale it's a plant swap it's a free plant swap in mobile and there's a big difference between yeah, the there sale is. and the it's swap. a free plan my truck and i with all the gardens and stuff like that we're gonna be down there again it's the central presbyterian church parking lot they've got a community garden right there and it's at the corner of saint anne and dolphin just remember central prez church in mobile starts at 10 o'clock it's a big plant a lot of plants there. if you don't have any plants to swap come on anyway it's a lot of fun a lot of good give me a kite a lot of people having a good time feeling great and i'll be there again it starts at 10 o'clock so get there plenty of time uh, to hang out uh, also uh cars Redem is having their native plant sale they got some really cool plants where you get insect eating pitcher plants that are actually native to mississippi uh that's today and tomorrow i think from 10 o'clock to noon Crosby Arboretum is just outside Picayune, Mississippi. So uh, I had a whole lot of fun this past week talking in, you know, around the state, across the country, up in Mobile. I mean, excuse me, Memphis. The crowd in Memphis was just wild. It was just wild. People well, you know, we have big listenership in Memphis. Yeah, well, and, and people are hungry for somebody to talk about stuff besides something besides all the just facts. You know, let's have some fun. A lot of people don't get it. Slow gardening is not about production. Production is important, but it's also about the ride itself, ride itself. And uh, so we're going to be talking about that all the time. So anyway, give us a call, toll-free, 1-877-MPB-MPB. P.B. Ring. Let's start out uh, down in Macomb, Mississippi. My grandparents' stomping ground, the Felder's stomping ground. R.C., what's up? Oh, good morning, Felder. Howdy. I just want to ask you a question. I just want to howdy back to you. <laughs> howdy. I just, I just want to <laughs> I just want to ask a question, um, and then I'm going to get off the air so I can uh, listen to your um, your answer. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, just during one of your shows, you brought up a uh, thing about the when he myths about killing ants, like yeah. the rich and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I remember you saying that ants only eat liquids. Well, my question is, you know, ants tear everything apart. And so all that stuff that they, they tear apart, they do not eat. They only just take back to the queen, to the nest. Yeah, you know, and, and you got to remember, plants are full of liquid and oils. You know, they, they'll eat the oils and stuff. You know, so uh, any kind of oils or liquids, that, you know, that's how they do it. They don't, they don't have stomachs. They can't, you know, digest stuff like we do. So uh, it's mostly liquids, but plants are full of, of water and liquids and nutrients and, and sugars. You know, a lot of plants have got natural oh. sugars in them. So, you know, it's, it's all dissolved. It's like, they're, it's like they eat everything through a straw. 
No, 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 no. No, I, I said ants. A N T S. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. But did I say? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm. Oh, that's what, yeah. I, I thought you said. I thought you said plants. <laughs> no, no, ants, ants. Ants. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> anyway, so no, they you know they, they 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 eat stuff that dissolved in liquids, you know, just you know just it, it, it's like eating an ice cream cone. You know what I'm saying? We don't really eat the ice cream cone. We eat, uh, we suck it down, or you know, with that, that kind of thing. So so all the stuff they break yeah. down to so like a beetle bug when they tear it all apart, they wait till it turns into a liquid. Yeah, yeah, they just lap it up. They just lap it up. You know, it's not, you know, cows sit there and they munch and they chew and they, you know, all that kind of stuff. Ants just slurp it. Oh, okay. Okay. So that okay, that's well, that, that, that that's the reason grits don't work. They grit they don't eat grits and it swells up inside them and kills them. They don't eat grits. Then they might lick a little stuff on the outside of the grits, but that's it. Anyway, great question, RC. I got you. Yes, sir. And then one last thing I heard just the other day, uh, a show on MTV, they were talking about German roaches, like how long they live around and how they uh, uh, can uh, basically, they said uh, pesticide people figured out that uh, roaches love uh, sugar or whatever, whatnot, yeah. and then they adapted to that and then they stopped eating it. But yeah. they, 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 they just say German roaches are probably going to be around for the rest of my life. Yeah, and and, 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 and and hundreds of other kinds. So, anyway, appreciate it, man. We're going to scoot. Let's slide over to, 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 to Jackson and talk with Bill. Bill, what you got, man? You got a list of things, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, freeze. Rosemary looks like it's bit the dust. I lost five I different. Mean, I lost five different kinds of rosemary, but I've already replanted mine because that's what we do. Okay, so I had one very mature rosemary bush that was about twenty years old. Uh, any chance that'll come back out for the from the roots? Well, mine was mine was only six years old and it's dead as a doorknob. So I don't I don't know yeah. I don't know all you can do is scratch if if it's got a little life in it down at the bottom you know then then go for it but uh, yeah. and if you're in central Mississippi it's gone and then, and then my running rosemary which it took me about ten years to actually get it to start running mm -hmm. uh, mine died that too. Looks gone too mine died too you okay. know <laughs> I tell people all the time you know mine too and I've I've already planned I've got uh, three new I've got three new kinds of uh, cascading an upright and a really bushy kind that I put in the back of my truck because it can take the wind better. But I've already replanted my rosemary because that's just what that's just what we do. Okay, next question. Hello. Um, maybe all three of those questions rolled into one. I don't know, but let's let's go up to Olive Branch. Lonnie, how are you this morning? Just fine, sir. Just good, fine. Good. What's up? I uh, just something that. I, it crossed my mind that my father-in-law used to do. He loved to raise trees, mm -hmm. and he would dig a small, big, medium, whatever he could get. Mostly he liked the little ones, and he would put a dig a hole, put a little a pea gravel in the bottom of it, mm -hmm. and then put him about a one-inch pipe from the top down to it. And when he'd water, he'd pull water down that pipe plus around the plant, and all of his trees did very well. Yeah, and uh, and then when the uh, they got big enough, he could just slide the pipe out, and he didn't have to worry with it after a year or so, you know. Yeah. But that's it, the way he kept his growing. You know, that that helps the big pots, too. You put stuff in a big potted plant. You know, a lot of times when you water, water runs around the edge, inside edge, and runs out the hole in the bottom. Uh, but if you put a little pipe to put water down deep, you know, that helps get down there. But that's a good way to help plants get started, you know. But the, the idea is to help them right at first, make it through the first year, because they don't have any roots to speak of. But then they start growing right. roots straight out, and that's when the pipe doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. After a while, you know, and you just— always, what? Yeah, and he always liked to put a little pea gravel because it would it kind of hold the water in place for a little while. Yeah, you know, and and, the theory uh, he had, and it worked for him. It, it, did, it did work. I worked at a tree nursery for a long time where we grew trees in fields, and we dug them up, planted them in landscapes and stuff, and there's all sorts of variations. And the, the pea, it may help a little bit, you know, and, and it doesn't hurt to do it unless you overdo it, and then you end up with a bunch of gravel yeah. down there. But uh, anyway, no, it, you know, uh, these are good ways to help a plant get started, but after the first year or so, they need to grow the roots straight out, and that's where water, you know, when he did that extra watering, that, that really counted. But anyway, it's a good way to get them started. Thank you. Enjoy your show. Hey, have a good hey, Lonnie, thanks for being part of it. 
Okay, now slide to a Benton. Benton and Billy. Billy, Benton, Billy. What's up, man? I need to ask you a question about three things. Is the Fuji large for someone do you need to be cross pollinated or just self pollinating? Self pollinating. That's, that, that's reason it doesn't yeah, have okay. it, yeah, this reason it doesn't have any seeds in it. Self pollinated so it doesn't make seeds. It's, okay. Are, are milkweeds perennials or annuals? Some, some, are, some are both, but uh, most of the time they're perennial. Some of them get killed to the ground and come back up from the ground. Mine are coming back, uh, but most of them are, are, are perennial, but there's some that are annuals, I think. Anyway. They're mainly more like butterflies, aren't they? That's what I heard. Well, you know, the uh, butterflies like any kind of flower. Monarchs, butterflies, they'll, they'll feed on any kind of flower, salvias, anything like that. But, but monarchs only lay their eggs on milkweed. Only, only milkweed feed their caterpillars. I got you. Okay. But in, any kind One of... question. On, yeah. Oh, well, so my neighbor gave me about 500 pounds of leaves off his oak trees. Going to put on my patch in my garden. Will oak trees suppress or help a compost being formed? Uh, compost is made out of oak leaves. Any, okay. Anything, any, anything that breaks down and makes compost. So I go around the neighborhood. I've, I've got neighbors who who mow their grass uh, and and put the the clippings and the gra- leaves and stuff on curbs. I know which neighbors have got only oak trees. Uh, and when they mow the grass in the fall, their the bags of clippings got oak leaves and grass leaves all mixed together. And I drive around my truck and I I harvest them. But the oak leaves oh. make terrific compost. Well, uh, well, worms coming back by itself, you have what kind of see meal to attract them to the surface. No, we're, we're, you know, we're, worms out there all the time. You know, they're you know they're hungry yeah. and they'll eat the leaves and grass clippings and stuff like that. Cottonseed meal just has a little extra protein in it. And we sort of beef them up. You know, cows will eat just hay, but a lot of times farmers yeah. supplement that little cottonseed meal for the protein. Same thing. Okay. C- well, ca- cows and cows and worms. Thank you, sir. All right, appreciate it, Billy. Bye. Okay, now um, Java. Yeah, we have a full full bank. Uh, we, we quick, could, Clyde, what? I was going to ask, do you want to take a break and catch these calls, or you want to go get them? Java, you're the boss. Let's go get them. All right, let's get let's <laughs> Clyde, let's catch Clyde. He's on the road, I think. Nope. Neil, is this Clyde? Yes. What's up, man? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Okay. We can. What's up? All right, great. Hey, I'm down in Brookhaven, Mississippi. I've grown uh, tomatoes, peppers cucumbers and uh, wicking barrels uh, for several years have a reservoir of water five six gallons and then body mix on top pretty good success with it but the last couple of years all my tomatoes have had blossom in rot yeah I do add dark lime to my soil I'm wondering is it time just to change out the soil or what am I doing wrong? Well, it's it's good. Every I grow a lot of stuff in containers, big containers. And what I do is every couple of years or so, I just dump it all out, mix it up, add a little fresh to it, put it right back in to so sort of freshen it up. But now, blossom end rot is not actually caused by a lack of calcium in the soil. You can have calcium in your in your potting soil or in your garden dirt, but if the plants are staying a little wet, including down deep or a little dry, they can't absorb. Calcium is a big, big uh, molecule, and it's hard to absorb it if the plants are either a little too wet or a little too dry. So a lot, a lot of times it's just well, in big containers, you may want to add a little extra bark to your potting soil so that the water can seep down deeper without keeping the bottom part wet. Because if, if it stays wet down deep, roots aren't going to be able to grow there. So anything you can do to, to water and then get air down deep around your roots and, and just don't let the plant stay dry or keep st- soggy wet, and blossom in rot shouldn't be a problem. Okay, I may be keeping it too wet then. It really, right, re- it. you know, yeah. Keep keep in mind that 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 the water stacks up. You know, if you water potting soil, it's going to be wetter at the bottom than at the top because the water just sort of stacks that way. So anything, you know, in the bottom part of them, if you can add a little bark down there, that'll help the drainage down deep. It means. You know, more air down there, roots can grow down there better. I bet that's all it is. Well, I, I, all of my barrels have a water reservoir, four or five gallons in the bottom of them, with a hole that drains it out if it yeah. gets too wet. Yeah. You, you know, you have a cylinder of dirt that goes down into that reservoir. Yeah, this is sort of like, sort of like one of the, the, the what is it, grow box, not grow box, what's it called? Uh, oh, yeah. You, yeah. Know what I'm t- you know what I'm yeah. talking about. It, it copied that. I copied that, but I just use whatever container I got around the house. Yeah, well, just keep so in mind, if, if the roots stay wet or if they stay dry, they can't absorb calcium, even if you've got plenty of it there. Okay. All right. 
like that's no problem. I appreciate you. Thank all you, sir. All right. Oh, 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 one other quick thing. You can buy a, a fertilizer. It's a liquid calcium. It's called Stop Rot. That's what, that's what it's called. All it is, it's not a pesa. It's liquid calcium fertilizer. And, uh, you know, every month or so, just mix it up real light. Just sort of wet your plants down with it. Don't overdo it. And uh, put the calcium directly into the plant through the leaves. Stop Rot. Liquid calcium fertilizer. I got you on the phone. One other question. You talked about the freeze. I've got two gardenia plants about three years old post transplant. Uh-huh. I, I rooted them. And this is their third year. It looks like this last freeze just killed them to the ground. Should yeah. I just trim them off and leave them and hope they come back, or are they dead? Well, you don't have to do anything. But if you got three of them, what I do is I cut one really hard, one sort of medium, and leave the other alone. And they'll all okay. three, they'll all do three do fine. But the one you cut the hardest is going to be the prettiest by the end of the summer. Okay. All right. All right, Appreciate man. Thanks, ha- hands on the wheels. Okay, let's slide down to Mobile. Beth, I'm going to be in Mobile tomorrow morning at Central Prez at this big, big plant swap. What's going on with you? Hi. Um, I have a comment and actually a kind of a question. Okay. I, I have got Milac all over mm, my yard. Me too. Um. And um, so I, I, I looked up an article from Bill Finch, um, and, and he had a few methods. You know, one, trying to dig up the tuber, which seems, he it's, said that was basically impossible. And that's, that's it, it, can be a, it, it can be a, it can be a big one. Right, right. I've heard, I've heard there's even a recipe for, the, for making something with the tuber. Uh, um, yeah, uh, asparagus, also, asparagus, same family as, I mean, uh, uh, smiling, same family as asparagus. You could eat the young shoots raw right off the plant. It's just a, it's a member of the asparagus family. So anyway, keep going. Uh, keep, keep going. Because that's, that's the shoots are coming up right now. Yeah. Um, and he, he suggested a couple of methods, either, you know, cutting them back constantly close to the ground because they really do need the light. Mm-hmm. But the one I found that most interesting was a long soaking method um, of mixing um, uh, concentrated Roundup or anything that had, you would know the word, Glyph- glyphosate. Or, right. Right. To mix that at half, um, half the concentration, add a tablespoon of miracle Grow, and then put these young green things where they're, when they're bendable in a bottle containing the mixture. Yeah, it's a lot of trouble. Just I mean, mi- mi- like mi- 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 listen. Here's the deal: Roundup is absorbed only through green tissue, not roots, not stems, right. not you know. Uh, and as you get it on the new leaves, it's absorbed right. into it. It moves down to the roots, kills the root, and then the top dies. So all you gotta do is right. brush it or dip it in some Roundup, you know, anything like that. That bottle stuff. Right. Who's, who's got time for that? You got too many Smilex to do that. So uh, right. cut it, cut it all down. Let the new growth come okay. up and kind of, kind of tough. You know, when it first comes out, it's real tender and floppy and all. Right, right. L- let right. it, let it kind of toughen up just a little bit, and uh, you can either okay. brush it or spray it with Roundup. You can even put on a plastic glove, and then a cotton glove, and put right. the Roundup on the cotton glove and go around and caress the plants. Oh, okay, that sounds good. It, 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 yeah, this is this is this is, is not going to get it one time. Smilax is a tough. Right. It's a native plant. It's a tough plant. It wants to grow much more than you want to get rid of it. So it's a tough. I have a tough right. time with it. So, but anyway, right. that that's the keep cutting it down, and after a while, it will peter out. It's gonna, you got to stay on top of it, or else uh, you know treat it with the roundup. There there are no other in between things with with Smilax. Yeah. I, I, I feel like it grows a foot a day. It, um, it, it, it's what it does. It's a native plant. It right. likes it here. Right. Okay. Well, well, thank you. I'll, I'll just keep clipping. Okay. I'm going to give you a really oddball thing here. Uh, you know, I've known Bill a long, long time, he, and he would know this, but he may not have mentioned it, but some Smilax have got, got berries on them. They'll make berries, right? Right. Well, you can, you right. can find a sweet gum tree and make a little nick in the trunk, and when, that, and when the, the sap comes out, it's real sticky. It's called sweet gum because it's got uh, sugar in it, right. sort of like maple sugar, but it'll pull your, your, your fillings out. If you'll choose some sweet gum sap with a Smilax berry, it makes it elastic just like chewing gum. Interesting. Yeah, it's a stupid thing to know. I know a lot of stupid stuff like that. <laughs> anyway, if you can't, I guess what I'm saying, if you can't beat it, eat it. 
Okay. All right. And, and, and so m- m- munch on some. Go go out and munch on some. Yeah. It's in the asparagus. The new growth is just as tender as it can be right off the plant, just like asparagus. Well, maybe I'll try a couple of them this evening. It ain't going to hurt. You got enough of it. That's right. <laughs> Appreciate it, Beth. Okay. Thank you for your call. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, we're on a roll. Let's go down to Flora. Neil, what's going on uh, up in Flora? I was at the plant swap in Flora yesterday. We had so much fun. What's going on, man? Uh, not too much. How are you today? Good. What's uh, it? This might be totally out of left field. What, what Do you have a connection to Forest, Mississippi? Uh, mm, well, I got some friends there. Okay. <laughs> Well, my my grandmother was from Forest, Mississippi, and I, when I was getting into garden about ten years ago, she is referenced Felder Russian, Felder Russian. Well, you got to keep and in mind. Mu- okay, yeah, <laughs> Neil, you got to keep in mind this month, this month, March, two thousand twenty-three is my fortieth year of being on live radio every week. Forty years. That, <laughs> that, that's that's impressive. That's quite the run. But yes, she. She always recommended, when I had questions for her on, on gardening or flowers or whatever it might have been, she always referred me to you. She, she passed away uh, this past week. And yeah, oh, sorry. I just, to, I just want to let you know you're doing a good job and touching a lot of folks. Well, and you're, cel- and, 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 and you're celebrating her in the process. We appreciate that, Neil. That's right. Now, I just want to touch base with you and tell you to keep on keeping on because – Listen, Folks are spreading the word. Listen, when my grandmother died, I went to her house. They were dividing up all her worldly, uh, early, uh, worldly possessions, her house in the shift robe. I stole her concrete chicken and put it in my yard. So go to Granny's house and get you something. When nobody's, I, I, something. I've heard that story before. That, that, that's it, what kind of made me think of it. There you go. There you go. Get something from Granny. Put it out in your yard. All right. We appreciate it. You, you bet. Thank you so much, Neil. Sorry for your loss. Okay, now... I think we got time for another call. One more call up in Olive Branch. Oliver, how you doing this morning, man? I'm good. Uh, listen, I'm wondering if you can eat the top out of the radish like you would green. What, you root it or eat it? No, I have them in the ground. Yeah, well, so what, what was it about it? Well, can you eat the tops out of the radish? Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, if you plant radishes too thick, they won't make radishes. They get all crowded. A lot of people pull up the thinnings and eat them perfectly well. Oh, yeah. I've been separating them, but... Uh, eat them. I was just wondering if you could eat the top out of them. They're yep. good and healthy. That's right. You go into town, give them a big old smile. They can say, you got some radish between your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Have, <laughs> nothing to it, Oliver, man. Nothing to it. Put a little vinaigrette on it. Makes it taste better. All right, my friend. I certainly appreciate it. I missed you last week at the uh, farmer's market out there. Well, it was, you know, we're just, we just doing the best we can, man, just scooting around the best we can. So, Java, what's up, man? Well, I just had to say before we get to the end of the show, which we are at, um, the MPB Public Media app has a brand new feature, a Talk to Us feature. What? So if you have the MPB Public Media app and you maybe ran out of time this morning and wanted to get your question to Felder, all you have to do is open your app, go to the menu button, and click Talk to Us. And then you can go to the Felder, to the Gestalt Gardener page and do a voice note you can even send a video of your garden or that troublesome plant and um we'll talk about it next week now this this not i mean it's not gonna they're not gonna ask me questions at inappropriate times are they no we we, <laughs> we do all the screening <laughs> but people can interact with you and the show and all of our shows anytime they want just download the app and talk to us you are the man and by the way me and java and the other folks we're gonna be broadcasting live from clarksdale mississippi in two weeks at the at the I forget the Cro- Juke Joint Festival. Juke Joint Festival. We're going to be from, from uh, Garden Center, downtown Clarksdale. I'm headed to Mobile, Alabama in my green truck with all the stuff growing in it. And if you get a chance, it's a beautiful weekend. Take a kid or, or a neighbor or somebody who hadn't gotten out much lately. Take them to a farmer's market or to a garden center and get them a pot full of stuff. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB.